Hello everybody and welcome back and in this tutorial what we are going to do is we will actually try to perform the first test of our reverse shell. So this is our first test right after we uh, we saw how we can execute commands on the target system. Now let's try to actually test this on our Windows 10 machine before we start adding any new functions we might need and any new libraries that we need to import. So let's see how we can compile our reverse shell since right now if you see, let me just delete the server.save, okay, since now you can see that we have the reverse shell.py which can't really be executed on Windows target system unless the Windows target system has the Python interpreter. But we know that what we can execute on the, on the Windows target system, system is the actual executable files or .exe files. So let's see how we can make our reverse shell.py to be an actual executable. So let me just delete this socket as well, not really sure what it is. And let us right now use our wine in order to actually compile this program. So what we want to do is first of all go right here and just type this command as the same command as I will. So wine slash root slash dot wine slash drive C slash python 27 slash py installer oops slash python 27 slash scripts slash py installer and then after that once you specify that we want to use the py installer library in order to compile this we need to specify some of the actual additional options that we want to that we want our reverse shell to have such as we want to it to be one file which we can specify with double dash and then one file right after it and then double dash no console which will specify our reverse shell not to prompt the console open once it starts the file which can be a little bit of actually weird if our target actually gets prompted a console so we want to make sure to remove it from this program then right after you specify all of this, you need to specify the name of the program that you actually want to compile, which in our case is reverse shell.py. Press right here, enter. This will take a few seconds to compile and you will get some directories right after it in this reverse shell directory from where we will get our executable. So then you can actually use any pro any type of delivery method you want. Let me just show you. If you just type ls right here, you will have this build directory, this this directory, and this reverse shell dot spec directory. Your actual executable will be in the this directory, so just type cd dist. And if you type ls once again, you can see there is reverse underscore shell dot exe. That is our actual executable. And let me show you how you can actually transfer it via USB drive. So just plug in your USB drive. And your USB drive will be plugged into your main machine as you can see right here. What you need to do is first of all let me delete the previous reverse shell from here. Actually I can delete all of this, don't really need it at the moment. In order to actually import the USB drive into your Cal Linux machine you need to go up here on devices USB and find the name of your USB drive and just click on it. In my case that is the Kingston Data Traveler. I'll just click on it and right here it should be imported into my actual Kali Linux. As we can see it is imported right here. So in order for me to copy that file or the reverse shell to the actual Kali USB drive I just need to specify move reverse shell to the media root and then Kali Live which is the name of my USB drive. So this is the path where your USB drive is or will be imported so slash media slash root and then all you have to do is afterwards specify the name of your USB drive. Then if I just click here enter it will move the reverse shell.exe to my USB drive and after this finishes I can just uh, eject my USB drive and uh, paste the actual reverse shell to my Windows desktop environment. So this is taking a few seconds since this is probably the first time. Okay, so let us let's wait for this to finish 
And afterwards, all we have to do is just run our server on our Kali Linux and run the reverse shell on our target system. OK, so it has finished. You can see if I just type ls right here, there is no longer reverse shell.exe in my directory. And what you can do right now is delete all of this that you got during the compilation program. So we can delete the build directory with my rm-r. We can delete the this directory with rm-r. And we can delete the reverse shell.spec. All we need to do right now is run the actual server.py. And we can now eject our USB drive. Go right here. Paste the reverse shell onto my desktop on my Windows 10 machine. And then if I just double click this, you can see nothing really gets prompted to the actual target. It will look like this program didn't run at all and didn't open anything. But if we go to my actual Kali Linux machine, we can see connection established from the IP address of my Windows 10 machine from this port. In order to make sure that this really is my Windows 10 machine, in case you doubt, we can just type ipconfig in my command prompt on my Windows 10. And you can see the IP address on my Windows 10 is 192.168.1.4. So we successfully got the connection from the Windows 10 machine. Let's see if we try to execute some of the commands, such as, for example, uh, ipconfig, the same from our terminal. We can see the results from ipconfig, dir, which will list all the actual files on my desktop. As we can see, the path is to my desktop. These are all the files on my current desktop directory, as you can see right here. So, for example, you can just... Uh, make there so i'm pretty sure i believe it is make there test one you just execute that and we can see right now on my desktop there is a directory called test one if we wanted to we can delete the test one so we just type del test one but that is a directory it might actually cause some problem okay yeah it will cause a problem doesn't really matter you can see right here it will hang we will see how we can fix that in the future tutorials but right now we can see that we successfully compiled our program and we can successfully execute some of the commands on our target system. What we will do in the next video is we will continue fixing our program. We can see, we will see how we can actually change the directory from the desktop to some other directory as we like. And we will also see how we can execute some of the commands that present us the problem, such as for example, this command. Also, if we actually try to specify to delete a file that doesn't even exist by making a typo or just not specifying the correct name of the file, our program will right now crash in case we do that. So we will see how we can actually fix that as well so we don't actually lose the connection just like we lost it right here while trying to perform some task. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you in the next lecture where we will continue coding. Bye!